What's going on everyone? Welcome back. Patrick here and moving on to the next question with two sample hypothesis testing. So we're told in a certain city, men and women are assumed to get the same hours of sleep per night. The standard deviation is 1.2 hours and 0.9 hours for men and women respectively. A researcher wants to test if there are differences and takes a sample of 34 men and 46 women. The sample means for men and women is 8.2 hours and 7.6 hours respectively at a 1% significance level. Is there enough evidence of differences? Okay, so reading this question, hopefully you could tell that we're dealing with two populations. Basically, all of the men in a certain city or in this certain city that we're looking at and all of the women in the city. And so what I like to do with these two population type of questions is basically write out the two populations and write out all the information that I'm given sort of in columns. And then it's easier to refer to when we're doing the actual calculations. So we're told, uh, notice that this sentence, the standard deviation is 1.2 hours and 0.9 hours for men and women respectively. And so those are the population standard deviation. So if we consider the men being population one, women population two, basically sigma one is equal to 1.2 hours. Sigma two is equal to 0 0.9 hours. Now notice that the population standard deviations are given, right? And we know that if the population standard deviations are known, from the overview video, we're going to be doing this z-test. I so thought I would point that out on the side. But uh, let's keep filling out these columns here. So a researcher wants to test if there are differences and takes a sample of 34 men and 46 women. So a sample of 34 men, basically n1 is equal to 34. And then 46 women, n2 is equal to 46. The sample means for men and women is 8.2 hours and 7.6 hours respectively. So this X1 bar here is uh, 8.2. And then this X2 bar is 7.6. So from the samples, um, the average for women is less than men. However, we got to test if that's enough evidence, right, of having a sample size of 46 and 34 to draw a conclusion that, yeah, there is enough evidence of differences in, uh, in sleep patterns. And uh, also notice that we're dealing with a 1% significance. So that's what our test is going to be. Now, here is uh, where stuff gets a little bit more unique with uh, two sample hypothesis testing versus one sample. Basically, the format of the null and alternative hypothesis is gonna be different. So what we're testing for, well, right now, notice how it says in the first sentence, men and women are assumed to get the same hours of sleep per night, right? So both of these populations, the um, population means for both are assumed to be equal. So basically the null hypothesis is that the population mean um, for men, right, their hours of sleep is assumed to be equal to that of women. And we, a researcher wants to test if there are differences. So the alternative hypothesis would be that they are not equal. Right, remember that this here represents the population mean and we're using a sample to see if we could draw a conclusion about the population mean. So right now, the assumed truth is this, the null hypothesis, that's the status quo, and we're testing if there are differences. So notice the difference between two sample hypothesis testing and one sample. In one sample, we had that population parameter equaling a number, some kind of number. But here, we have it equaling the other population parameter that we are looking at. So that's pretty much the difference. And because there's this equal sign here, this is going to be a two-tailed test. Right? If we had like a less than and greater, like a less than equal to greater than sign here, or a greater than or equal to and then less than sign over here, 
then it would be a one-tailed, and we're going to be doing examples like that too. But just like one sample hypothesis testing, if you see this equals in the null and then not equals for the alternative, then you know you're working with a two-tailed test. And actually from here, the fact that we have all the information and we have the structure of the null and the alternative, we know we're dealing with a two-tailed test, we know we're going to be doing a Z test, basically all of this now, it doesn't even matter anymore, right? We can just look at all of this. So that's my suggestion is you take these kind of questions, create two columns for both populations, put down the info that you're given in the paragraph, set up your null and alternative, and then after you can just look at this over here. You don't even need the scenario anymore. You do need the scenario for maybe your concluding sentence, right? So whether we're going to reject the null or uh, fail to reject it, um, you got to make that sentence in relation to the problem. But other than that, basically everything you need is over here. And so now we just go through the exact same steps as we did with one sample hypothesis testing. So the first thing I'm going to get is the critical values. Right, And if you remember, they depend on a couple of things. Is it a one-tailed or a two-tailed test? Right, If it's a one-tailed, we only need one critical value. If it's a two-tailed, then we're going to need two critical values. In this case, it's a two-tailed. And then um, the population standard deviations are given. So we know that the critical values are going to be on a Z distribution. And then we also know the significance level, which is 1%. And so it's exactly like it was before. So we draw out our Z distribution. And uh, because it's a two-tailed, there's going to be two critical values. So there's going to be one here, one over here. Let's shade this in. Right? So this 1% is basically split up between these two regions. So this is actually going to be 0.5%. And this is going to be 0.5%. And then this middle area here is 99%. And remember these shaded regions, that's the rejection region. And this region in the middle is the non-rejection region or the acceptance region where we're going to maintain that null hypothesis. We're not going to be rejecting it. And if you want to get those critical values two different ways, so you can look it up on a Z distribution. Um, so you'd look up the area to the left of here, you'd look for this critical value. So you would look up the area 99.5% um, right to the left to get that there, or you could put it in a calculator as well. So you put these inputs, so stat, distribution, normal, and then F3 inverse the normal, we're looking at the Z-scores. You get to this input screen, data is going to be variable. The tail, uh, there's multiple ways you could do it. You could look at this left tail, you could look at the right tail. I'm going to look at the central tail, actually, this central area over here. So here you would put central, area would be 0 0.99, right? That's that middle area right there. Standard deviation for Z distribution is 1, the um, mean is uh, 0, and when you execute that, you're going to get two values. You're going to get positive 2.58 and then negative 2.58. Right, I rounded it to two decimal places. It's like 2.57 something, but uh, I just rounded it up to 2.58. You could also, um, if you don't want to do the central, tail, you can do like the right tail. So you could put this tail to right. And then this area here would be this 0.5%, but in decimals. So it'd be 0 0.005. And then you would just get this single value over here. And then because it's symmetrical, you know, this value has to be negative 2.58 as well. All right? So multiple ways to get these critical values. Hopefully at this point, you're pretty comfortable in, uh, in doing that. And then once you have your critical values, the remaining step is to find out what the Z statistic is with all of this information, right? The Z test statistic, and then see where it falls on this uh, diagram here. 
And basically the formula for the Z test statistic for two samples is this over here. Right, so a bit of a different formula than the one sample Z test statistic. Sometimes you'll see this formula also in the numerator. They'll have like the difference in the sample means minus the difference in the population means. But this part here, it's pretty much always equal to zero. Right, so a lot of times you'll see textbooks not even writing that. Some textbooks do write it though. But um, notice that our null is that they're equal, right? That's the assumed truth. So if these are equal, basically this is gonna be zero. It's pretty much always gonna be zero in questions you get. So this is the uh, formula over here. But again, sometimes you'll see that in the numerator instead. But um, yeah, just plugging everything in here, um, you'll have uh, 8.2 minus 7.6 minus 7.6, this is gonna be divided by the square root of 1.2 squared over 34 plus uh, 0.9 squared over um, 46. And when you do all of that in your calculator, you would end up getting 2.45. So that's the value of the test statistic. And where does 2.45 go on this diagram? Well, notice it's gonna be like over here, let's say. So that is the test statistic. And so notice that it's in that acceptance region where we continue to accept that null hypothesis. And so relating it back to the scenario, basically the concluding statement would be that there's not enough evidence to show that there are differences in the hours of sleep that men versus women get in the certain city. Even though there were differences in the sample, right, either the samples weren't big enough or whatever, basically with all of this information, it's not enough information or not enough evidence rather to um, conclude that there are differences for the whole population of men and women in the certain city between their uh, sleep patterns. And if you were to take that whole process that we just did and just do it with the stats calculator, you would go through these inputs over here. So you'd go stat, F3, we're doing a hypothesis test. F1, we're doing a Z test. And then F2, because we're dealing with two samples now. And then you would get to this input screen over here. So data would be variable. This is a two-tailed test, right? So this input here, like before, it's basically the alternative hypothesis. So you would input doesn't equal that population mean uh, two. And then um, the population standard deviation for the first population is 1.2. Sigma 2 is 0 0.9, and then X bar 1 is 8.2. Then we'll have 34, then we'll have 7.6, and then we'll have 46. Right, so a lot more inputs versus the one sample because in this case, we're dealing with two samples. And also, I wanna point out that, notice that in these inputs here, there's no input for the value of uh, that mu1 or mu2, right? For those population averages from both populations. And that's why I was saying that in that Z test statistic formula, these are basically irrelevant, right? And they're assumed to be equal anyway. So they are, um, they just net out to zero in that formula, in that numerator. Right? If they did have to equal something, there would be an input for it in the calculator, but notice there's not even any input. So that's why you could just assume that that part in the numerator is always going to be zero if your textbook gives that formula. Um, and then basically when you run this, you're gonna get a bunch of inputs, but the two, or a bunch of outputs, but the two outputs you wanna look at is the uh, Z test statistic and the p-value. And then the rest of the outputs are basically gonna be some of these things repeated. But the Z value you'd get is 
and then the p-value would be 0 0.014. So notice that value, 2.45, I actually didn't write it down over here, but it's basically the same that we got uh, when we did it manually. And then the p-value, exactly the same like one sample hypothesis testing, you compare the p-value to the significance level. And if the p-value is greater than the significance level, right, in this case it's 0 0.01, so 0 0.014 is greater than 0 0.01, whenever the p-value is greater, then we fail to reject the null. But if it's less than, then we would reject the null hypothesis. So whether we use that Z test statistics, see it's in between the critical values, or we see the p-value is greater than the significance level, in both cases, we're getting the same conclusion. Basically, we have to continue to accept the null, so there's not enough evidence that there are differences in the hours of or uh, hours of sleep that men and women get in this city.